the headlines. Minister is working to boost the income tax. Israel launches military operation against Hezbollah tenants. Hello to you all, this is Romeo Broadcasting Network News. I'm Thomas Camulato with the latest story of the hour. Ministry of Revenue held discussion with media professionals on ways of boosting income generating mechanisms. Romeo, buy another the story. The revenue that a country generates is essential for its overall development. In Ethiopia, various media outlets have been working in promoting the revenue of the country to the extent of the government expectation. The Ministry of Revenue has discussed with media to solve the problems. Ethiopia has reportedly planned to collect 2.3 trillion burr at the end of the second GDP. According to the document of the ministry, 17.2% of the total income of the country is gained from the tax collection. However, it is implementation is below the plan. Ministry of Revenue Adani Chabebe said there are many factors that causes poor tax collection. There are challenges related to external bodies, taxpayers, and even principles and proclamations. There are also internal challenges. Now we have started solving the internal problems, she said. Adani said that there are a lot of challenges related to custom, and they have been striving to counter the challenges being with concerned stakeholders. It is only our country that has no policy of custom. It had been using it till recent time, but now it hasn't this policy. Therefore, we have been working to restore this policy, she said. Adani noticed that they have been working to effectively implement the proclamations that have no defect in a council that have limitations in enhancing revenue of the country. She underscored that the government has been working to identify illegal traders and taxpayers. It was said that companies that pay taxes to import goods and tax-free companies are on the same 50% level. Adani further noticed that a lot of properties imported without paying tax. She said that many materials were imported without paying taxes in the name of 55 international holders hotel's construction in Abala town of Afar Regional Estate. She also called upon media to work hard concerning the issue of revenue of the country. The media we have been planning to work with all legally established media to fight against illegal and unawful practices concerning revenue of our country, she said. Eritrean President Cyrus of Hork received yesterday U.S. Assistant Secretary for Africa Tibor Negi to discuss bilateral and regional issues of mutual interest. President Cyrus on the occasion underlined Eritrean readiness to, for constructive engagement to foster warm ties of cooperation with U.S. in various sectors, according to Yemana Gabramask and Eritreans Minister of Foreign Information. Nagy for his part reiterated the U.S. decision to strengthen its tie with Eritrea, Yemen said on Twitter. Both sides further agreed to work together to consolidate the ETO Eritrean peace agreement, he added. In our website reported. United Nations and IGAD appreciate Ethiopia's contribution to stabilize the Horn of Africa. Akluga brought the story. United Nations and Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, held joint consultative meeting in Uganda, Kampala. On the event, the State Minister of Ugandan Foreign Affairs Ministry, Ariano Kello, appreciated the initiative taken by Ethiopian Prime Minister to restore peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea after bloodshed war. United Nations Political Affairs Deputy Director Taye Brook expressed that Ethiopia has played a vital role to bring sustainable peace in the Horn of Africa. Taye added that IGAD and the UN have agreed to strengthen their relations. IGAD Chief Secretary Engineer Mahabuba Mualim noted that lift of sanction from Eritrea and the peace agreement of South Sudan is a paradigm shift in the politics of the Horn. Ethiopian Ambassador to Djibouti, Shamebo Fatamo, for his part, said that 50% participation of women in the Ethiopian political power is an unprecedented move. The European Agriculture Research Institute announced that 
in order to minimize soil acidity, coordination of agriculture and mine sectors are decisive. The, the, institution, the institute has revealed it is research finding on the problem. Carl Brown has more on that. Soil acidity research, which has been conducted for the last four years with support of Finland government in collaboration with the Oromia Agricultural Research Institute, has been presented for the stakeholders. According to the research, 40% of the Oromia farmland is affected with acidity. Manager of Finland Project of Product Improvement and Food Security with Ethiopia, Dr. Tigas Charnat, said if soil acidity is continued in the current way, it will be impossible to produce crops in Oromia after a few years. If we could do nothing, Oromia won't produce anything 20 years from now. Agriculture is on alarming stage, so the government and the donors should play their part in order to save farmland of the region, she said. Director of Research at Oromia Agricultural Research Institute, Dr. Talon Galeto, for his part, knows that the government should support the farmers to protect their land in order to increase product and productivity. He adds that the use of limestone to minimize soil acidity should be supported by the research. <laughs> If they use limestone, fertilizers, and anti-insects, they can simply protect their crops as well as their land. They can also increase the product and the productivity. If they do so, they can even change their life. Director General of the Oromia Research Institute, Dr. Fato Ismo, underscored that it is crucial to use limestone in order to treat soil acidity, adding that the importance of working with mine sector in doing so. We were uh, al -Buda. It is important to work with the sector who engage in mining because they have good awareness about it. Agricultural experts on their part have a knowledge of soil. If you combine these two different experiences, we can bring the intended change. It is said that it is very important to expand lime, limestone factories across the region in order to solve the problem from at its grassroots level. The Federal Public Procurement and Property Disposal Service stated that it is working to digitalize its system in order to alleviate the problem observed in the sector. A relevant discussion has been organized in Finfinesseri. Let us raise that more. Ethiopian Federal Government Public Property Procurement Disposal Service has conferred with stakeholders regarding its first quarter work performance. According to the work performance report presented on the discussion, the purchase of properties worth 1.5 billion per was conducted. On the other hand, the sale of properties that became out of service, which worth 22.2 million per, has also been conducted. It was said that various offices failed to provide procurement demand on time failure of a statics agency in providing market evidence timely and the happening of price difference due to foreign currency are indicated as challenges. The work performance report has also stated that regarding the disposal of properties that became out of service, there is a limitation in disposing the properties timely and announcement. It was also mentioned in the report that works are underway on preventing the supply-related problems that the institution faced in this year, not to happen again in the two cases years. Some participants of the discussion have raised that there is poor supervision and follow-up concerning the procurement activities. The stakeholders have also reiterated their commitment to work with great attention to address the deliance observed in providing the procurement demand at the required time and property disposal. Director General of the Federal Public Property Procurement Disposal Service, Gazud Abba, said the necessary preparation has been completed to conduct procurement activities through using electronics starting from this year. What he said will solve the procurement-related problems. As federal government, there is a plan to conduct electronic procurement which is free from person intervention. We are ready to implement it in this year. It will resolve the existing problem. The Federal Cooperative Agency announced that it has been working to create sustainable market linkage to the farmers to supply their products to the industries. The agency has, has discussed with stakeholders here in Adama town on the issue.
Data from Federal Cooperative Agency shows that more than 1,000 associations have been established in the last 27 years. The Federal Cooperative Agency announced that it has been worked to create sustainable market linkage for the Cooperative Workers Association engaged in agriculture and agriculture related workers. The party director of Federal Cooperative Agency, Abdi Mumar, stated that Cooperative Agencies has been discharging its responsibility in the activity to create farmers and the pastoralists who use this technological advancement. <laughs> In the process of making our agriculture transformed and the technologically supported cooperative agencies have been contributed an irreplaceable role through creating market linkage for the farmers producing different industrial imports. Abdi expressed that the agencies working to connect the farmers and industries engaged on agro-processing. The cooperative agencies are also working to producers fair and sustainable market and creating strong market linkage with industries use their products as importers. He added that the cooperative agencies have created a sustainable market for the agricultural products with domestic and international import-export companies. Some representatives of different stakeholders for the past said that this discussion will help them to solve the intrinsic problem. <laughs> Our farmers are lacking materials produced in industries which help us to increase its productivity because of a number of illegal brokers in the supply chain of those materials. So we are discussing on how to minimize those brokers and make our farmers easily get what they want. We are watching Oben, Voice for the People, now news from abroad. The Israeli force have launched what they call an operation to export and neutralize tunnel between Lebanon and Israel, allegedly dug by the armed group Hezbollah. The operation was announced by the Israeli military on Twitter on Tuesday. Israeli military spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conferences told Reuters news agency that the operation would only take place on Israeli side of the border and that would be not extend to into Lebanon. In a tweet, Israeli military spokesperson Aviki Aviki and D said the Lebanon's government is responsible for the build the build up of the tunnel, saying they are endangering Lebanese, Lebanese citizens. Also on Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his country would continue to take action to ensure the security of Israel. Hezbollah has not responded to the military's operation yet, but the United Mission near the Israeli-Lebanon border, UNIFIL, said in its statement it was notified of the operation on Tuesday morning. Lebanon's online news portal Tahr reported that the Israeli army was excavating areas opposite to the Lebanon village of Karfkela and Adaish on the southern border. According to the Al Jazeera correspondent Natasha Gonim said the operation by the Israel is a rare occurrence. Israeli military spokesman Spokespeople are saying they, they have discovered tunnels made by Hezbollah and they, that they are attempting to thwart any attack. Al Jazeera reported. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all for now. Have a good time.